So what Mark Lamont Hill specifically does is he defends essentially the tenets of critical race theory, and that's what's taught in schools. Um, Even adherents, not necessarily the scholars who write about the theory, but the adherents, they often preach the tenets, but not the concept itself. Really, really important to note. And if you're ever engaging with a critical race theory adherent, that's really something to keep in mind to bring up if they're denying that what they're talking about is critical race theory. Because as Chris Rufo has uh, told us many times, when you when you make this concept toxic, and it's easy to make toxic because it is toxic, you just have to communicate the toxicity, they're not going to want to embrace it. So they're going to, the, the people who adhere to it are going to pretend that it's something else because they don't want to embrace toxicity. Um, that's also why Marxists don't admit that they're staging a revolution. So as you heard during this interview, Mark Lamont Hill repeatedly asked me to name a critical race theory scholar who said that they were staging a Marxist revolution. And it's a stupid question because what I should have said just to shut it down in answer to his question is I should have said, well, it's a tenet of Marxism not to admit that you're trying to stage a revolution. So instead, we have to look at actions, not words, because actions speak louder than words. And the actions of these folks these adherents to critical race theory show that they are staging a revolution by tearing down our institutions in our nation, even using violence. That is revolutionary. So actions speak louder than words, and it's a tenet of Marxism not to admit that you're staging a, re- a revolution. So this all makes sense, right? Because remember, Mark Lamont Hill claims that he is not a critical race theory adherent, but in a sense, he practices critical race theory. Because he's even said before that the Black Lives Matter riots, the violent riots, the ones that we saw where buildings were on fire, where Um, these thugs were arsonists, essentially. They were destroying cities, destroying Black-owned businesses, um, tearing apart, looting, rioting. He's even said that violence, like tearing up a store, he calls it the spectacle of violence. He's okay with it because it's making a point that he thinks is necessary about our institutions, which he wants to be torn down. Now, the phrase that he will use, he will not say, I want to tear down these institutions or I want to rebuild them in a Marxist Marxist." way uh, along the Marxist doctrine. No, he uses a phrase uh, as follows. He calls it reimagining society. Reimagining society is what he says. But make no mistake, the phrase reimagining society is just a weirdo euphemistic way of talking about revolutionary structural change. And here's my question. How does such an entire fundamental structure, this reimagining, how does it happen? Well, if it happens all at once, And if it happens by first tearing down our institutions, even using violence if necessary, yeah, I would call that a revolution. Now, again, Hill, to his credit, I want to, or perhaps it's not to his credit, perhaps it's just part of his narrative and uh, his his verbal sleight of hand, but I do want to read a tweet that he issued in the wake of this interview. He said, and I quote, I'm neither a Marxist nor a critical race theorist. I do, however, think that both lend important insights that we should take seriously. Instead of demonizing, misrepresenting, or making them the subject of moral panic, let's actually listen and learn, end quote. Absolutely not. We should not listen and learn to critical race theorists and Marxists. They're evil. Period. Hi. Before you go, let me talk to you about something. As you know, I've been censored on Facebook and YouTube. So I partnered with Locals to create a censorship-free community. I also just launched my show, and I have a lot of exciting new things coming up that I want to make sure I can share with you and get your input on. I'm going to be sharing behind-the-scenes looks of my set and my show prep, and I get a lot of questions about my hair and makeup routines, my research process, and so much more. So I'll give you sneak peeks of all of that. I'll also be doing exclusive segments of my show just for Locals VIPs. All of my interviews will be shared on Locals for VIPs to watch as well. I'll be taking questions directly from VIPs for the video mailbag in my show, and you'll get the episodes free from ads. Who doesn't love that? Not to mention, I'll keep doing everything that you've already come to love. Ask me questions for live Q&As. Let's talk about your favorite books, what yummy vegan food I'm eating for lunch, and what ridiculous headlines I'm reading today. You can do all of that and more, but only if you are a Liz Wheeler Show VIP on Locals. The monthly subscription is $9 a month, but if you really want a good deal, we have an annual subscription for just $72. That's four months free, four months. So join me on Locals as a VIP. I'll see you over there.